guys, so today we're going to be talking about the fun subject of serial killers, so grab your coffee, maybe not grab a snack, don't grab a snack. This video is not snack appropriate, I'm just warning you. There seems to be a strong fascination with serial killers in today's society, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think they can teach us a lot. They're so interesting because they have these mental illnesses that drive them to do these specific horrific acts. I think there's a part of this culture that of this topic that likes to glamorize and romanticize serial killers and it's okay to be fascinated by something but we cannot forget how horrific these people were they were psychopaths they hurt so many people not only the people that they killed but their families and friends and people that they knew i get the fascination i'm a psychology major I get the fascination. I have a strong fascination with serial killers as well. But maybe we could change the language a little bit to make it a little bit more appropriate. Instead of saying my favorite serial killer is, I'm fascinated with this serial killer. This one fascinates me the most. But changing the language a little bit so we're not necessarily sounding like we're looking up to these people because we should not be. I just wanted to throw that disclaimer out there before we get into this because although this is a great topic and super fascinating and we're just so like intrigued by these horrific acts. I think there's still some people who uh, glamorize it a little bit too much. And I just want to give you guys a warning. I will be talking about some very upsetting things. You don't have to throw in the trigger warnings and things. Um, I will be talking about sexual assault and things like that. So if that is something that upsets you, then please do not watch this video. We're going to start with one that's close to home for me and is probably the most graphic and disturbing one in my opinion. So the first serial killer we're going to talk about is Richard Trenton Chase. This guy was known as the Vampire of Sacramento. Now if you know where I live, I live in Northern California about 20 minutes from Sacramento. His killings actually took place in the 1970s. He had this like fear that the Nazis were going to turn his blood into poison, rather turn his blood into powder through poison. This led him to kill people. His first was a 58 year old engineer he, who he shot in a drive-by. He broke into a home of a pregnant woman. He killed her, uh, mutilated her corpse, and had sex with it. And then he bathed in her blood. He wasn't necessarily picky about his uh, targets. You know, he killed women, children, men, like any of, of any age, including hmm, a 22 month old little boy. He actually ate the organs of said child. He was found guilty for six murders and was sentenced to the gas chamber. He wasn't killed by the gas chamber. His inmates, his fellow inmates in the prison were actually, they were actually scared of him and his uh, ways of eating the flesh of his victims. And so it's rumored that they convinced him to kill himself and then he did overdose on antidepressants. And that happened in 1980 and the day after Christmas. That's nice. So they did rule it a suicide. So it was interesting that the inmates were so afraid of him. They didn't try to kill him. They actually convinced him to commit suicide. And that is really weird to me. Next I'm going to talk about the most famous one on this list uh, in my opinion and that is Jeffrey Dahmer. He probably fascinates me the most out of any serial killer because he was so specific in his killings and the people that he would kill. This also happened, well began in the 70s, started in 1978 and went all the way until 1991 before he was caught. He murdered at least 17 young men and this all took place in Wisconsin. Usually also the people that he killed were people of color. Now what makes this story disturbing is he was arrested back Back in the day, when was it? 1988. So while he was murdering people, he was arrested for fondling a 13 year old Loatian boy and he served 10 months in a work camp, five years probation. And he just was released and was able to continue on with his killings, which was weird because it took place literally like almost at the end of when he was captured. And they had no idea that he had been murdering these young men. So his uh, ways of killing was also extremely disturbing. He would kill them, rape them. He dismembered them a lot. He had sex with uh, the dead bodies. So he was a necrophiliac. And it gets weirder. He wanted to have these submissive type zombie-like people. So before he would kill them, he would actually drill holes into their skull and put acid in their frontal lobes to create zombies. There's a lot of documentaries on Jeffrey Dahmer because it's just one of the most notorious serial killers in America and how he was actually caught was one of his victims escaped which can you imagine being that guy who like saw everything and like the buckets of body parts and the fridge of heads like I just so he ended up running away like he escaped and the police found all the severed heads and penises and other bodies parts just in his apartment with photographs of mutilated bodies as well. He was charged for 15 murders and 
his death was actually interesting. He was actually beaten to death by a fellow inmate. And what makes this also interesting is he, in his trial, he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, which is a legitimate reason. However, where's the line? And that's kind of a discussion topic we can talk about because I know um, I don't want to get too political here about the death penalty and whatnot. And, you know, diagnosing those with uh, insanity for when they are serial killers because technically, yes, they have severe mental illnesses that make them incapable of living out in the real world. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is Edmund Kemper. He was also known as the co-ed killer. His killings took place in the town of Santa Cruz, California. Again, in the 1970s. I don't know why it's so prevalent and why they're all talked about and they were all took place in the 1970s and 80s. So this is an example for me of why I believe some serial killers are born that way. A lot of times you see it early on and um, when the child's diagnosed with conduct disorder or oppositional defiant disorder, which then can lead into antisocial personality disorder, which a lot of serial killers would be diagnosed with. If you want a whole backstory on that and like diagnosing serial killers, we can do that. Edmund Kemper killed his grandparents when he was 15 and that's what kind of started his serial killings. He killed and dismembered six female hitchhikers in Santa Cruz and he was also necrophilic so he did have sex with their dead bodies and probably body parts. And then he killed his mother and one of her friends. And what's interesting about this guy is after he did that, he turned himself into the police. You know, even if they have this mental illness, they don't necessarily feel remorse for what they've done, but they can recognize that it's out of the norm. It's not socially acceptable. So he was found guilty uh, for eight counts of murder and actually asked for the death penalty, but they did not give it to him. So Edmund Kemper is actually held at a medical facility where Charles Manson is also held and he's still alive to this day by the way. So Kemper was up for parole in 2012 and 2007 and denied it himself. He said that he was not fit to go out into the public and actually stated that he was perfectly fine continuing on with his life in prison. He has another parole hearing actually in 2017 and doesn't want to go. He doesn't think that you no know, anyone's gonna let him out and he doesn't care to attend his own parole hearing. He doesn't want to get out. So Kemper, what makes him really scary is that he's so large. He's six foot nine, over 250 pounds, and has an IQ reportedly of over 145. So that makes him extremely intimidating. He actually intimidated other serial killers in the facility that he's at. There was an incident where an FBI agent was talking to him in the room and he uh, repeatedly was pressing the button to have the guard come in because he just felt intimidated basically by Kemper and Kemper was like you know relax uh, this is what Kemper said to the FBI agent if I went apeshit in here you'd be in a lot of trouble wouldn't you I could screw your head off and place it on the table to greet the guard and he basically said afterwards that he was just joking but I just think it's interesting how he doesn't care to go back into the real world he turned himself in and he's just perfectly fine living in prison and dealing with his crimes okay this last one is going to be quite disturbing. It's another really, really disturbing one and it involves children and so it can be a little upsetting, just a forewarning. So we're gonna talk about Andre Chikatilo. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Wow, I sound really American right now. All these murders took place in the Ukraine and when he actually was charged, he was charged for 52 of the 53 murders that took place. 53! 53. It began in 1978 and he uh, kidnapped a nine-year-old little girl with the intention of raping her and when she struggled and fought back, he stabbed her. This is where he realized that his sexual arousal only came about from killing women and children because she was nine. What makes this even sadder is someone was actually arrested and executed for this crime and he was innocent. He would lure prostitutes, homeless people, runaways, and then he would perform these acts in a forest like somewhere nearby. When he was originally arrested, he claimed that he was innocent, but then later in 1992 admitted to the murders. This trial was actually the first major media event post-Soviet Russia, so it was like a big deal. He was actually kept in a cage in the corner so the families of the victims could not attack him. He was sentenced to death for each of the murders, but obviously you can only die once, so he died by gunshot to the head. You know, there are a lot of theories. Uh, a lot of people have their own theories. That they're just sick people. They're just gross and, you know, shouldn't be on this planet kind of people. I think it goes beyond that personally. Um, just, you know, learning about antisocial personality disorder. If you've ever seen American Psycho, that's a great example of it. I actually hate that movie, by the way. It's obviously a mental illness. It's a mental disorder that they have issues with because with 
something like personality disorder, it's so hard to treat and often they deny treatment because it's their personality. They don't see anything wrong with themselves so they don't want to change. And a lot of serial killers do not want to change. And I just think there's a biological background there to these actions that they do and it's just like, I get the fascination with it. It's just so extreme and so horrifying. Let me know the serial killers that you would have coffee with, just not as a romanticizing thing or a glamorization, just to ask them questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video and let me know if you want me to do other ones on other serial killers. If you want to request some down below, I can talk about them. But I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. What? Mm -hmm.